This video is for the demo of a game called Airport Sim. The, uh, the full screen is not full screen exclusive. So if you change this here, it doesn't put your monitor into that resolution. It will just make things uh, more blurry. So there's no point to it. Um, Unless you wanted to play it in a window, then it would obviously do something uh, useful. Um, yeah, you got other settings here. You can modify uh, things if need be. We have a decent number of volume control. Uh, you can adjust a few little gameplay options here. And... Here's where you can adjust the controls. Yeah, I don't have my steering wheel uh, plugged up at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to use controller. Tutorials. Tablet. Vagar Airport, situated on the Faroe Islands. In this tutorial, you'll learn everything you need to know about the tablet. The tablet is an important part of the gameplay, as it's your primary source of information. It features everything you need to know to be able to perform tasks on the ground. actually let me go to the map which is a bit weird I think we can show you what it's talking and about and in the final tab named weather you'll find all the options available to manipulate weather conditions at your present location well, so I'm not sure if you, we're supposed to have a grey background there we shall discuss each of these tabs in detail we can hear things going on, but we can't see any. The screen is divided into two columns. The left-hand side acts as a timetable for all flights that are scheduled to take place at the airport on the present day, but divided into arrivals and departures. At the top, there's a button that filters the flights and shows only the ones you're assigned to handle on the day. Each flight is displayed in an ordered grid where all the information you'll need is displayed. Arrival time, flight number, arrival or departure location, and stand number are located on the left. The right-hand side displays a list of tasks you'll have to complete when handling the aircraft. To view the tasks are arranged in the order in which they should be completed. Okay, I don't know why I skipped that one. When you complete an action, it will be crossed off, and those which are yet to be performed have empty markers on the left side of each task title. Now we'll head to the map tab. Whilst at Vagar, you won't need the map too much. 
However, at larger airports such as Keflavik or Warsaw, it will be a major player in getting to where you need to be. The map features will show you the quickest route to your destination and in addition, the location of available airport vehicles, aircraft and aircraft stands. Pretty much everything to help you navigate the apron. To navigate the map, use the controls displayed on screen. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a little bit kind of awkward pushing uh, a trigger as well as moving the stick or, or trying to push the button down and move the stick. I don't know why they had to make it that uh, difficult, really. I mean, you could have just moved the stick around by itself, but anyway. To zoom in and out, use the controls displayed on screen. Yeah. Um, gotta get the camera kind of in a usable position, otherwise, <laughs> we're not gonna be able to. To rotate the view, use the controls displayed on screen. Yeah. The GPS view is always centered on your position and rotates around it. Okay. And finally, the weather tab. At the top, you'll notice that two different clocks are displayed. The first one, from the left, displays the local time at the airport, and the second one shows UTC time, which is used as a common time zone in aviation. UTC time is calculated relative to the prime meridian passing through the famous town in the United Kingdom, Greenwich which is also known as the center of time. Below the clocks, you'll find a slider that allows you to manipulate the time in airport sim. And under the slider, you'll find a calendar where you can select any date. Try it for yourself and see how the height of the sun changes depending on the time of year. Um, okay, so how do we do that? Because I'm not actually able to do that with the gamepad. Uh, let's see if the mouse works. All right, mouse works. So, well, I mean, like, I can move the cursor with the mouse. Um, select any... Select any date. All right, well... No, nah, nothing's, uh, nothing's happening here. I'm clicking on everything I can click on, basically. <laughs> nothing's happening. The live button will automatically set the date, time, and weather conditions to what they currently are in your present location. 
In this instance, the weather data is fetched and based upon the most recent METAR weather data at Vagar Airport. The Apply button is used to apply the selected time in-game. At the very bottom, there are weather presets that you will be able to select to recreate predefined weather conditions. Some selected conditions, such as cloud cover and storm, cannot be manipulated once applied. Using the sliders, you'll be able to change and adjust individual weather conditions. On the left, there is a visualization of the cloud height. corresponds to the height of the cloud base above sea level. The upper line displays the height of cloud tops above sea level. Um. I only see one line per square back. Okay. I think it's the lines with the triangles, eh? That are what you're talking about there. Adjustments of weather conditions are done in real time and do not need to be applied like time changes. Good job. You've now learned how to use the tablet in Airport Sim. In the next tutorial, you'll be on your way to learning the basics of ground handling. In this tutorial, you will learn how to secure an aircraft place at a gate following standard safety procedures. You will do this with the use of chocks to be placed under all the aircraft's wheels and cones to be placed at critical areas around the aircraft, where we do not want curious passengers or unauthorized personnel approaching. As you can see, a plane is approaching the gate. Collect a full set of wheel chocks at the indicated area. It turns on and off. The aircraft has arrived at the gate, and its engines and all beacon lights are switched off. You may safely approach the aircraft's front set of wheels. Place a set of chocks under the wheels. To do this, Approach and point at the f Great! I think you've got the hang of it. Now head over to the indicated set of cones. To raise them, press the displayed button, click the displayed button to rotate them upwards, and use the displayed button to position them. To throw the object, hold down the displayed button. Just like with the chocks, place the cones in their indicated areas. The order in which you do this doesn't matter.
Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have to adjust my uh, dead zone on the left stick. A little bit too sensitive and wants to kind of run uh, left or right sometimes. But we'll get there. I may have to uh, make a part two video. Because uh, I do have to uh, stop the lunch, but um, I'm hoping we can get these tutorials done in video number one and then video two will be. Yeah, it's, you know, we have a bit of a play around with the uh, simulator. Now, pin. the bypass pin needs to be inserted into its slot on the strut of the front wheels. The purpose of this pin is to prevent the cockpit crew from having any steering control of this wheel, as it can pose a danger to the crew on the ground if moved accidentally. It also allows the ground crew to take control of steering of the aircraft by bypassing the aircraft's pressurized hydraulic systems during a pushback procedure. You'll learn more about this in another tutorial. Now approach the front wheel and firmly insert the bypass pin in its slot indicated by the marker. Congratulations! You have just prepared and secured the aircraft for parking and further servicing. Now, we will present you with the same scenario, but in reverse. You will need to collect all the previously placed safety articles efficiently and safely. At Vagar Airport, we have a unique situation where an aircraft can leave the stand and taxi without being pushed back onto the taxiway. This means the final step of this process will be taking the bypass pin out of the front gear strut and the aircraft... The aircraft has oh. already been serviced and is waiting for it to be released from the ground crew's hands. Each parking gate or parking stand is identified by a red or white perimeter outline. When the aircraft is in motion and its engines are running, no unnecessary objects, vehicles or personnel should be inside this area. This is due to the risk of the aircraft colliding with a vehicle or unwanted objects being sucked into the engine. If such a situation occurs, and the area is not clear, you'll be notified through your in-game tablet. Collect the cones and wheel chocks and place them in safe areas outside the parking stand's perimeter. Finally, head back over to the aircraft, remove the bypass pin and leave the area. Aha! Uh -huh. I was wondering if you could stack them. That would be pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if there's a limit, but... Uh... Okay, it looks like maybe two is the limit. At least that helped us get it done twice quick. Oops. Wrong button. Uh, so it's, wait, no, it's, uh, 
Ah, leaf. Okay. Yeah, pretty sure it won't let us pick up three, but we'll try. All right, three. Go for four. Five. Oh, that's it. That's the zone. But you know, I'll um, I'll get that fixed up. Um, all oh, right, the stack, yeah. So let's let's do that just for the heck of it. Stack them all up. Um. What's going on? Oh, come on, no. Okay, that must. Oh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe that is the maximum. Ah, oh, I've done it again. Yeah, it must be the maximum. <coughs> um, right, so that's all that, and then uh, luckily we can pick the equalizer up all in one go. So it wants me to take the pin at the same time as the chop, apparently. I mean, I was, I was going to do them, you know, individually. But... You have completed the training on securing an aircraft when parked at a gate. GPU. What does that stand for? Close to coupling with the GPU. 
Then get out of the tug, approach the rear, and follow the action displayed on the screen to couple them together. Well, I don't know if that's the frame rate or what, but it looks a bit bloody uh, Yankee at the moment. Uh, how do we get out of here? Here you go. Right, now are we close enough? Let's see. Drag. Yeah, that'll do. Great. Just remember that you hook and unhook other trailers in the same way. Hop back in the tug and head over to the aircraft as indicated. Yeah, it definitely seems to tank when you hop in this thing. A bit weird. Okay, so does it want now, me? detach the GPU from the tug and go to the rear side of it, where you'll need to open the hatch revealing the control panel. Alright, well, I'll just have to, um... believe that, uh, this must be the right position for it. So I'm looking for this thing. Now here. I'll show you the generator startup <coughs> sequence. You'll operate it using the controls displayed on screen as we go. Toggle the power on button. This will activate the generator battery. Okay. So how do we do that? Oh man, I really gotta <laughs> get that bloody dead zone golden. Um, okay, did that. I don't know, I get the feeling that. Yeah, that's, that's not it. Um, May have to use mouse. No. Yes. Okay. So the question is, how do we do that? Okay. So we can. Now you'll need to hold down the engine start button. You have to move the approximately three the dot seconds until the engine starts. Over what you're trying to do. Oh, that was three seconds. Now we have to wait 30 seconds until the engine heats up and the oil temperature reaches 80 degrees Celsius. In the meantime, go to the nose of the aircraft and open the hatch where the connector is located. Open the nose. Great. Now on the side of the GPU, there's a slot containing a cable. You need to pick up the cable and plug it into the aircraft's power socket. To pick up the cable, follow the action displayed on screen. Connect the cable to the aircraft's power socket. Ah, 
Perfect. Now go back to the panel and switch the engine setting knob from idle to run. Then press the DC output button to the on position. Now notify the cockpit crew through the communication panel that they can turn off the APU and switch to GPU power. Open this panel using the controls displayed on screen. Uh, Navigate to the flight deck option, then APU, and then turn off the APU. Great. Now the aircraft is powered only by the GPU, and the rest of the ground crew and the aircraft crew can continue with their work. Now it's time to teach you how to disconnect an aircraft's ground power prior to departure. Obviously, we can't just unplug the cable and leave the crew without power. When you finish all your other tasks, and it's time to disconnect the GPU, you'll need to inform the crew that they can start the APU. We'll teach you how to do that on this aircraft. Head over to the indicated area. Approach the aircraft from the side where the GPU is parked. Your task now is to notify the cockpit crew that they may start the APU. To do this, Open the communication panel using the controls displayed on screen. Select flight deck, APU, and start APU. Yeah. I mean, I was reading this on the side of the plane. It says pilot full switch. And I was thinking, you know, maybe we can just talk to them from here somehow. But he wants me to go through like this, so... APU, turn on APU. Great, the crew has just started the APU. Go to the back of the aircraft, specifically under its tail, and listen to the APU startup sequence. If you want to, remove your protective headphones using the displayed button. To check the startup progress, open the tablet and select the aircraft you're currently at. In the task table, you'll find information about the startup progress. Um. Now go to the panel and switch the DC output to off. Then turn the engine switch from run to idle. Finally, unplug the cable connected to the aircraft and place it back into the GPU. Great! Everything went according to plan. Now you need to return the GPU to the designated location at the parking ramp to complete the tutorial.
here. <laughs> Uh, probably wants me to pick it up. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, we're not even hooked up. Whoops. Oh, yeah, that's one. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we can get that. No, let's just reverse, I think. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, a bit wobbly there. Um, well, okay. Uh, well, alright, but maybe we're not going to be reversing. Congratulations, you've just learned how to operate the GPU after arrival and before departure of an aircraft. See you later. Okay, so that looks like all the tutorials, hopefully. Um, so yeah, when I uh, come back, we'll make a uh, part two video and I'll click new game and we'll uh, see how we go. So, um, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Back for a part two video for the demo of Airport Sim. So the first video we played through the tutorial. Uh, this video we're going to actually get into the, the game. So scenario. All right. Um, being a demo, we can only choose certain uh, options. So it looks like we've got to go to the Bagar. Uh, it looks like there's four airports possibly in the game at the moment. Okay, so uh, I guess the first thing we do is probably check out our tablet. So we can see the arrivals and destinations, uh, this arrival and departure. Yes. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Uh, so how do we... Our tasks only, okay. So now we we'll, we'll only see the ones that actually pertain to us, so um, landing at 9.15, so that's got to be this one, um, says 3, which I guess is, um, I'm 
location three, I guess. Um, maybe that's our plane there. So we're just going to wait for it to Yeah, be interesting to see where it turns up. Then we can hopefully figure out what um, you know how you can see where the. Uh, although we do have a map, don't we? So it's, it's on the way, in fact I could get run over if I'm not careful. Um, let's see, so it's about, should be over here, should be in this uh, yellow area here. So anything outside the red line should be okay as far as I know. Maybe it's going to line up with this uh, line down the middle here, probably. Mm -hmm. So the plane's coming in, parking at stand number three, which is where we are. We need to place cones, the chocks, and the bypass pin. Yeah, you can only take five at a time, apparently. So we'll just quickly go over here, and we've got one. Three. All right, so you only have to carry five anyway, so that's cool. So we can get the whole job done in one go. Um, gotta get that, and I think that's all we need. And then we put the bypass pin in. So, what's next? Okay, so we need the uh, the tug with the um, that tree thing over there. Uh, I don't think that's the tug though. Um, <clears throat> Maybe we could use this instead of the tag, or maybe I have to go looking for the tag. Let's have a look, see where it is. Okay, so the tag's down around the other door. Um... Yeah. What is this? Let's have a look. 
It doesn't look like the GPU, does it? Airport. No, I don't know what that is. <clears throat> it's down here. La -di -da -di -da. Okay, so. Right. Well, we've got a few of them, but they're all. Actually, is this the. This looks different. Does it matter? Not sure if it matters, but see that one, it looks slightly different to this one. I believe this is the one we were using last time. Of course, we're in the wrong seat. I wonder if it matters. Let's see what it says on the map. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if we can use this one. You know, I mean they're a little bit different, but. How's that cone doing there? Looks like it's up in the air, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't remember putting a cone like that. That's, that's weird. <laughs> uh, is that one of my cones? One, two, three. I'm not sure if that's one of my cones, to be honest. Because I had five cones, and there's one, two, three over there. And then two there. So this cone, I don't know what's going on there. I don't think I put that there. Um, right, so first thing we got to do is open this thing here somewhere. Nose, the nose. The, I mean, it's got to be around here somewhere, surely. Um... Or maybe you got to do them in the right order. Hmm. Turn that on now. I don't remember. Maybe. And we need somewhere to plug it in. Okay, it's underneath this time. Right, uh, DC. 
Yep, foot. Okay. And then we'll communicate to them and get them to uh, turn off the um, down um, flight deck APU turn off APU so hopefully they've done that Okay, so we haven't disconnected the trolley press to disconnect. Well, supposedly it's disconnected. Um, okay, let's uh, move it forward a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely disconnected. This is from the aircraft. Um, well, there should be some kind of a charging thing. Yeah. I mean, in the tutorial, it had a um, the percentage thing telling you where the, what stage the card was at, but um, yeah. disconnect the GPU. Well. Supposed to actually tell them to flip the uh, AP back on. Uh, no, it's not. Okay. Well, maybe I bought that up. That's weird. Oh, well, tell them to put the APU back on. Um, so now it probably has a no. Okay. I don't know why the percentages aren't showing up. But I guess we can uh, move on to the next. Aircraft number five. Uh, aircraft that stand number five, which <sighs> number five, yeah, okay. Can we no we can't. Alright. So it's, it's kinda over there in front of all the other vehicles. So
Yeah, really choppy kind of. Um, camera movement, horizontal camera movement when you're in a spear for some reason. I mean obviously, yeah, something Something's not, I don't know whether it's to do with the trailer. I think it's to do with the sexual tug, to be honest. Um, you know, maybe they've got too high textures or model or something. Something is very weird about it. Like, I mean, everything else, the planes, the... You know, the airport, everything's fine, basically. It's mainly something to do with this. I'm pretty sure it's to do with the tag. Pretty sure it happens whether you got a trailer on it or not. Um, so the first thing we'll do is turn that on. Start it up. Run it. Now, where is the port on this one here? Okay. Um, so we can. Turn that on, and where are we at? Alright, so we get them to um, turn the AQ off. Come on. Oh man, it's not giving me the option. Wait, something's weird. should be good to yeah it's not giving me the option for some reason what's going on here it's not quite playing the same way that the tutorial was telling us oh what signal to start Wait, what? Turn on APU. And now it says... Wait for the APU start. Which, uh, usually you'd have a... Um, let's see what happens if I go to the back of the plane. Because usually it would give you a percentage. I think it said something about go to the back of the plane before. Um, but that's weird because I mean I can't... It doesn't make any difference. Wait, now we get a percentage. But do we not get that percentage if we're not at the back of the plane? That would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? I would just go to the back of the plane. Well, there we are. So now we can disconnect the GPU. So I imagine before you disconnect, you want to turn this off. And then we probably tell them to um, uh, turn the um, 
I mean, it doesn't tell me to do it, but as far as I know, you would go here and then tell them to turn off the APU. APU must what? Okay, something's it's not quite right there, but I think maybe on the next plane it might become a bit more clear as to what's going on. So we've got to get rid of all the shops and everything, get this out of the way. So are we connected? We can hopefully just drive this out of the way. As long as we're out of the red line, we should be good. Um, and then we just can run around and pick up all of these. Wow, good one. Oh. Okay, I probably can't pick another one. Oh, what? Hey, wait a minute. One, two, three. Oh, okay. So it looks like it'll allow you to... No? Oh. Okay, so maybe the maximum is six, not five. I'm going to drop them back in here. Yeah, something. What is it? There's something. It's it's to do with the vehicles, I'm pretty sure of it. Any of these little trucks and that that we've got around, you get close to them and the whole thing just seems to rub it. Ah, yeah, that'll do. Oh, man, that's painful when, I mean, it, it gives you, it's almost like motion sickness. And yeah, we'll take the pin as well. Alright. Four lost 90. Paint me. I'll tell you what we can do. Can't move the um, anything with the game here. Okay, that looks like about it then for the demo. Yeah. All right, well, I'd say uh, that's probably about it. Um, I mean, there's potential here, I'll put it like that. It's, the graphics are kind of okay. I mean, there are some low quality pictures going on, um, like for instance, on the actual airport building you may notice <laughs> it looked it didn't it wasn't quite looking the same as the rest of the thing um i think maybe and, and i mean opt optimization okay they, they've obviously got to do optimization um i thinking in the way of the textures uh, maybe they should um kind of have a standard level of quality for textures everywhere and then use things like map mapping to um allow you to have a lower texture display, lower quality texture, uh, the further away you are. So um, if you do it right, you won't actually be able to see how the difference, it won't be jarring, it'll, it'll um, basically swap to a lower texture, further you go away and the closer you get, the higher one will display and and until you're up quite close and you get full 
highest quality you can get. Um, you know, if you do it properly, then you won't be able to see the transitions and it will just look seamless. Um, so maybe they need to look at something like that. I mean, surely they probably have, or maybe they have on some things and not everything. But um, yeah, I, I'm really hoping that they can get the optimization sorted out because that's something that people are really going to pick on, up on real, real quick. Um, What you can do is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, going into this, uh, I wasn't sure I'd really be that interested, but um, obviously they have done their homework and they know what they're talking about. And, and that kind of reflects in the simulation here where, you know, it actually makes it feel as if, as if it is real. I mean, I don't know how accurate it is or anything like that, but, uh, you know, you actually feel like you know, this is real world stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that kind of adds to the interest factor, but how this translates to spending a lot of time playing and, and how do they make it interesting over um, you know, a long amount of time, uh, that would be something that, you know, will have to be seen um, this time, you know, when they come to release, etc. I'm not sure if it released now. Um, have a quick check. Oh, it is actually released. Released um, end of October. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, it's hard to say really, you'd have to do more research into the game and, and also check reviews and see what people say, but, um, or gameplay videos, um, but yeah, I think, I think that's about it really, I mean the controls are right. Uh, possibly be a little bit better implemented on the gamepad, but I mean it's it's functional. Um, I just wish they could have simplified some of the controls for the gamepad because having to press like two buttons and a stick or something at the same time to do certain functions uh, that just feels a bit kind of weird for me. Um, especially things like moving the, uh, the view around or, you know, like the view on the PDA, moving the camera around. I mean, you should be able to do that with just moving the stick by itself. You shouldn't need to hold a button down and move the stick. Um, so, yeah. There's maybe a few kind of ways that they could better uh, implement that. But, um, yeah, I think I'll leave it there. If you want to try it yourself, there's a demo you can find on the Steam Store page. It's called Airport Sim. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.